Hey everybody, this is Andrew from the F-Mute. I've had a lot of questions about my mutes lately, so I thought I'd make a, a quick couple minute video and just uh, run through some of the features of the mutes and uh, hopefully answer any questions anybody's got. So I guess the best thing to do is start from the top. So um, here is the copper ring that reinforces the, uh, the, the front part of the mute right there. Um, really helps with um, response, articulation, evenness, uh, and I think that's kind of the three things that are the most important in a mute. Most mutes sound good, but is the response right where you need it? Is the articulation, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, um, can you get different tones out of the mute with different kinds of articulation that you use? Uh, and that's something that I, I really firmly believe in and that this mute does very, very well. Uh, and also, um, this really helps out with evenness. So if you're playing uh, in the low range, playing in the high range, the mute has a very, very predictable uh, front part of the note that's not spongy. It ha has a really, really firm, firm attack. So to me, that's very, very important. Um, just kind of moving around, uh, looking at the cork. Got three corks here. Uh, real important feature here is the cork extends all the way to the to the end of the mute, and kind of the same deal with the the, the copper front on the mute is that um, this cork going all the way to the front protects the mute from this copper from getting banged around on the inside of your bill. In a quick mute change, uh, the cork is always going to be the first thing that hits the metal of your bell, and so I think it's really important to kind of get the best of both worlds, that you want the sound from the metal ring, but you also want um, uh, kind of the, the softer protection that, that cork allows. Uh, also, with the cork, um, it goes back uh, far enough that in you know 99.9% .9 of horns you're going to get a really good grip on the bell and it's not going to wobble around like that. Uh, you don't have to do any kind of crazy jamming in, just a nice, you know, just placing the mute in there. You might maybe turn it like a quarter inch or something like that, but um, kind of the same deal with your mouthpiece. You don't want to put your mouthpiece in and just turn it like crazy until it's jammed and stuck in. Uh, just a little bit goes, uh, goes a long way. So uh, moving on to the next part, uh, and this is going to be kind of a hard part of the mute to see, but I think is probably the most important part of the mute in terms of the sound and playability is that tuning tube that's on the inside of it. Uh, all F mutes are tunable, um, and they are made out of this, uh, this hardwood. It's a hardwood veneer that I think it's like a 42nd of an inch thick. Uh, I steam it and, and glue it around a circle. Uh, so you get a, a perfect circle on, on the inside of the mute that, uh, again, kind of goes back to these mutes having a really predictable response, articulation, and evenness. But the fact that they are tunable means that you can put this in um, anything from an 8D. Again, I play a Schmid uh, to like a Schmidt with a T. A lot of the custom horns right now use Schmidt style bells in them. Uh, these fit fit really good. Uh, a lot of the caught up kind of custom cottage shop horns that are coming out, um, even things like, you know, kind of your standard Hans Hoyer, um, you know, just the, the list goes on and on, but um, I've yet to find uh, a, a horn that this mute didn't sit well in or, or didn't play well with. Um, one kind of quick um, aside about horn mute tuning is um, it's not the same as the tuning slides of your instrument. Um, the, the tuning tube on the inside of the mute is kind of meant to be adjusted to fit your horn and then you just leave it there. Like on my horn, um, I probably haven't moved this tuning tube in like the couple years that I've been playing on this mute. Um, that basically, you know, just play, play your horn, get it to where it's in tune and it sounded good, put the mute in there, play around with it until it's also in tune, kind of get a, kind of a visual inspection of about where that is in case for whatever reason it would move. Um, uh, and just leave it there. It's not something that on cold days you need to make it come up or hot days you need to go down or, or you know anything like that. Um, it's just kind of meant that you, you put the mute in your horn, you fit it there, the tuning tube will stop, I don't know, around here or here. You know, your mileage may vary, but just um, just absolutely set it and forget it. I make these tuning tubes pretty stiff. You can reach it in with your finger, but uh, the last thing that I wanted is if the mute got slammed down, the tube would move on you, or you know, in a case, the, the tube would move back and forth, or God forbid it would move while you're playing. But um, it's pretty stiff, and so it's not something that you should adjust 
uh, on on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. It's going to be you know you get this mute in the mail, uh, set it to fit your horn, and uh, and never have to mess with it again. So it's not really like like a tuning tube, but it's just sort of. Um, just a way to make sure that the intonation fits your horn and then you just uh, absolutely leave it there. Uh, it's something I'm a little bit nerdy with, but um, sorry about the, the random aside. Um, moving on, uh, it, this is a straight mute and so it's just a cone with a hole in the end. Uh, <laughs> they've been making mutes this way for a really long way. I think a lot of people refer to them as like a Riddish style mute or, or anything like that. But um, the wood that, that this is made out of is actually uh, strips of hardwood like this that, that I, I use and, and bend uh, and glue around that way. Um, I just think it's a, it's a pretty cool design. I, I think it's kind of neat. It kind of overlaps after a while. But um, really nice. Uh, I, I've had a lot of compliments on the, the workmanship and craftsmanship of the mutes, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, but using uh, like like the thinner strips like this, I can get a really nice cone shape and a really really even finish on the inside of the mute, which again really helps with that response, articulation, and evenness and overall tone color uh, of the mute. Uh, kind of another thing about this being kind of a standard Riddich style mute is. Um, let me grab this over here, is that it'll fit in just kind of your, your run-of-the-mill mute bags. I think this is a Protec right here, but uh, you, you get a perfect fit over uh, on the inside of it. Or if you have like a Marcus Bona case or a Cardo or, or any of those other ones, any spot in a case that's designed for like kind of a standard straight mute, Riddich mute style, this will fit just fine. So you don't have to worry about uh, reinventing the wheel there. Okay, so moving on to the uh, the, the bottom of the mute, kind of wrapping this thing up. Uh, if you listen, this is quarter inch uh, hardwood. Uh, it's not made out of any sort of ply or, or particle board or anything like that. This is this is cut from from one solid piece of wood. Uh, and I think this is one of those other really, really important aspects to this mute, having really even response, articulationness, uh, articulationness, response, articulation, and evenness apologize about that, that this hardwood right here does not move or flex or anything at all. Um, some mutes that I've played in the past that have had uh, kind of like Ikea style uh, particle board or plywood or something like that, when you articulate real hard, you can actually feel the mute almost kind of flex and move a little bit. Uh, you know, you could imagine almost like a speaker cone would, would move. And the, the thing that's weird about that is when you play one of those mutes very, very hard, you articulate the front of the note with uh, you know, kind of <laughs> as much Wagner style uh, harshness as you could think of, uh, the mute moves a little bit and it actually drops the pitch just for a second, uh, and it and it has kind of like a spongy spongy feel to it. Uh, not with this right here. This is rock solid, uh, you know, quarter inch hardwood. Uh, any time that you you know just articulate as hard as you can think of, this mute just just takes it. Uh, it. it you know, whatever articulation you put in, you get that articulation out. It doesn't do any kind of muffling or, uh, I mean, it is a mute, haha. But uh, it just, it puts, you know, just whatever you put in on the equation, that's the tone color you get out of it. And I think that's one real important aspect to the, the versatility of this mute. That if you want to play it very, very, w with kind of a nasally uh, French tone, you can absolutely get that sound out of that mute. Uh, if you want this to play more open sounding, um, just play more open. Uh, it's it's very, very versatile. That, that's something I'm, I'm very, very proud of. Okay, so kind of moving along to the strap, and you might say, Andrew, that looks a whole lot like the headbands that my sister uses. You are correct. Uh, this is a headband. It's elastic. Um, and for, for kind of three or four different reasons. Uh, one, uh, I think it's a comfort. Uh, I'm a dude. <laughs> Guys have, have hair on their, on their arms. Uh, and anytime you put this on here, this does not grab hair at all. I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, second, also a guy, uh, not leaving you girls out, but y'all can get away with a little more when it comes to concert attire. But if we're wearing you know a tux with a tux shirt with French cuffs, um, it's going to fit much differently than if you were just wearing a t-shirt or just a, a long sleeve dress shirt by itself. Uh, and this actually gives it a little bit of room to stretch over some of those extra articles of clothing that you might have uh, that I, I thought was a real neat feature. Um, 
One little last kind of tidbit there is a lot of people wonder about the offset of the mute strap. And I do this that if you put the mute like this, um, the, you imagine the bell of the horn right here. When you pick the mute up to do a mute change and you want to grab it, there's not a lot of mute hanging way over here that could catch on the bottom of the bell when you're trying to do a, a quick mute change. Um, some people that if you have smaller hands, you could go ahead and tie a knot up here uh, and you still get the, 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 the stretchy elastic of it. But for me, and you know, I, I kind of make these to where the average size in hand that when the mute's hanging here, it's something that you can reach down and grab and then just come, uh, come right in there with it like that. Um, so that's kind of the long and short of the mute, uh, F mute. So uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to comment. You can see me uh, at, uh, on, on Facebook, uh, F mutes, and then uh, my website is www.thefmute.com. Thanks so much.